Hello, and welcome to another installment in the Voltais educational series, The Voltais Way. Each video in this series will include an in-depth demonstration of one or more of the features in Voltais, the most secure and efficient enterprise file access, sharing, and collaboration platform on the market today. Let's begin. In this demonstration, we'll be discussing Digital Rights Management, or DRM and how it's applied in a link share policy for end users to then be able to send files to internal or external users securely using digital rights management capabilities. Digital rights management capabilities are sometimes required to keep information safe when data is sent outside of the organization. The recipient of the data can also be an internal employee as well as an external person. Voltize provides DRM on any type of file, however finer controls are available for Microsoft Office and PDF files. Voltize does automatic encapsulation of the files while delivering them in a secure manner. Let's proceed. As mentioned earlier, digital rights management is part of a link sharing policy. The link sharing policy is something that we'll go into in greater detail in a separate demonstration. But for now, we're going to focus on the digital rights management portion. So now that we're in part of the administration area for the link share policy, we can see a section here called download DRM files. This can either be turned always on or let the sharer choose. And at this point, the administrator has decided to let the sharer be able to choose the options available. Here we see the advanced options dealing with digital rights management settings. We can restrict access to a single device, meaning the first time someone access the link with a certain device, that's going to be the only device that they will be able to access that link from in the future. You can also set up the number of times the file can be opened by a user and the operations permitted. So you can have view, print, edit, copy, paste, save as, share or any combination of the above and you could also include do not allow macro execution for Microsoft Office files. We would then click on save and be able to proceed to see how the end user would interact with the link share policy. So now I'm an end user and I want to share a file and I want to have digital rights management associated with it and I want to share that file as a link with an external person. If you have the Voltize client running like we do down here, you can do one of two things. You can say click on this test folder and do a right mouse click on this particular file, select share as link. We're going to do a validation with the server. We've already logged in with our regular ID, but this allows us to use just a pin number to get in. And here we can enter the information to share the data. Or we can close this, close this, and actually use our Voltize client do a right mouse click, select My Vault, once again enter that PIN for our validation, come down to My Data, and we're going to scroll through here and we're going to find that same file, Five File Security Mistakes, the document that we want to share. We're going to come over here to our Share As Link, click on it, and now we're going to get that same pop-up we just saw. So we're going to enter the individual's name who we want to share this with. We're going to do John Smith. If we type the address correctly, there we go. Now, we're going to come up here and we're going to click on the Show Advanced Options area. When we do that, we're going to see that we have acquired a new button and several new fields. We want to click on the Add button so that our John Smith person comes down so we can actually create that link and share it with them. We also have a Permissions area and a DRM area. So let's look at Configure Permissions. And most of this will be covered in the Share as Link file, the video that we have, but we're covering just DRM here. So we're going to let the file be listed when we go to the site, but more importantly, we're going to show just download DRM files. So now, once we've selected download DRM, we'll close this, we're going to configure DRM. And we have several choices that we can take here to determine how we share this with our external user or potentially an internal user. We can restrict access to a single device. We can limit the number of times that the file can be opened. So zero is unlimited, one, two, three, four, five, whatever is appropriate. You can also limit or not limit what someone can do with digital rights management. So you can select any or all of these. We're going to, for demonstration purposes, just let them do an edit. So we'll unclick all these others. We're going to go ahead and close that. You could type in a message if you wanted to. So we're going to type in, take a look at this. You can also show whether you want to have just the current copy of this 
be shown to the person when they access the link or potentially you may make changes to this file later and you want them to get updated copies then you could select this update shared copy when data changes you can add a password if the policy that's been set up for you behind the scenes by the admin which we just saw earlier then you might need to require a password we're gonna put an easy password in here for just the moment so that we're gonna have a password acquired we saw where we set the admin could set the expiration date if you wanted the individual can make the expiration be something less than what the policy is set for it can never be more and you can also potentially restrict it to only certain IP addresses being able to access this once again controlling more of the security aspects of the file you share with individuals we'll click on share and now when we go to our share spaces we're gonna see that here's that file we see that it was shared by me with John Smith so I'm John Doe at this point and we can see a bunch of information out here we can see where we can get more information about this item so we can see that we've shared it as a link and we can see what the name of the file was we can also see things like we could download this file we could share it with others we can always edit the share so if we needed to and we may need to make some changes we can always do that that link will still be valid that we sent out to John Smith you can unshare the item at any time if you want if John says that he lost the email could you please resend the, the email you can resend the link by clicking on this button you can get a history of the file so if you wanted to see who you shared it with maybe who's opened it what they did with it you could click on history and be able to see that kind of information and you can also set alerts so let's take a look now and see what it looks like from our recipients point of view what that links looks like so we've logged into John Smith's email account and you'll see John has two emails I didn't mention before but if you remember correctly when we set up the share as link you have the ability to send out an email with the link in it and also if there's any password associated with it, so they'll actually get two different um, emails you can always share the password with someone separately maybe via phone or text somewhere on their message way of getting the data to them if you need to do that for security reasons we're gonna see that I'm gonna click on this access details for files folder shared by John Doe and we're going to see that's where it contains our password you saw the password I typed was pretty simple ABCD obviously not very secure so you're going to want to do something more secure but if I come down here and see the link I now see information about that link I see it's from John Doe I see the name of the file and there's the link I can see John's message take a look at this and it says there was a password associated with it so I'm ready to click on the link once I do I'm presented with this I am now in contact with the vault server so this is going to require my password so there's my password we're gonna log in and we're gonna see a couple of things right off number one we're gonna see this line right up here at the top and it says Voltai's rights management client is required so I've already downloaded the Voltai's rights management client and I installed it on my workstation it's right here so if you think it, it's a lot like Adobe Acrobat where someone be able to read it to be able to read a PDF file they downloaded Adobe Acrobat this is much the same thing so I've downloaded this already I see I have this file and I see that there's the file name when it was shared with me and I see that I have the ability to download it so I'm gonna click on download and remember when we talked about uh, earlier we, we had get an information and or a history about the file if you look right down here we can get information that we see that John Smith logged into the server and they logged in from this IP address so that we can go out and track where someone has done something with the server we can track what they've done if they downloaded a file or if they edited whatever they did with it we could potentially track that if you need to so I see that I have my security doc right here I'm gonna click on the document so that I can open it up it's actually downloaded to my downloads file but we're gonna open it and what's gonna happen now is remember that password and the digital rights management here's where that comes into play so here's the pop-up we're gonna type in our password we're gonna hit OK going back to the Voltai server determining what our access rights are it brings up the document in its native format so that we can access it or have the access rights that we were granted to be able to work with the document we come over here click on file we can see that basically we can do anything we can save we can close we can do edits go back we can come down here and I can come in right here and highlight this and we can change it to be CCCC okay so you can make whatever kind of things we could save it I don't want to do that but now you see that that person you can control what they do we're gonna go back to the Voltize client we're gonna do a right mouse click we're gonna to go to my vault remember I told you you can edit those those share links on the fly and not have to resend it well I'm about to show you how you can do that we're gonna come back in we're gonna to go to our shares we're gonna come over here to that share we're gonna edit we're gonna go back into we're gonna let the DRM piece remain the same but we're gonna change what the person can do and we're gonna make it so that they can only view it we're gonna take off at it we're gonna click done now we're gonna minimize this we're now gonna come out to our users workstation we're gonna click on the file explorer 
We're going to come out here to our recent files. There's that five file security mistakes. We're going to double click on it. And as this is being brought up, once again, we're going to be presented with that area for the password that we need to type in. And here you're going to see the power of DRM without having to resend the link or resend the mail or have the person access it, but basically access the data from wherever they may have downloaded it. We're going to type in that password. And now you're going to see that those changes that we made have taken place try to come in here I'm going to type in my C's again it won't let me do it it says editing has been restricted if I come over to the file area it says the only thing I can do is open and close this file so now you see the power of DRM within Voltize share as a link feature if as a user you decide that you want to um, either change the share and not share it with someone any longer or maybe you put that 30 days and you want to, it expired you can come out here if you want we're gonna do it manual right here we're gonna unshare with that individual we say yes we want to make sure that we don't share this with them anymore we'll minimize this we're gonna go back to John Smith's email there's that same email we're gonna click on the link now and now it says the link you were trying to access has expired so that means that he no longer can access that link and you once again are able to control what happens with your data even when you have shared it with someone externally we hope that you have found this session in the Voltize education series to be informative and educational Please visit our website at Voltize.com for more videos in the series educating you on the Voltize platform. If you have any questions or comments about Voltize, please send an email to sales at Voltize.com. Thank you.